Hi, I'm Joe Stoltz, the Digital Scholarship Librarian here at Mount Vernon. Um, we're standing in the carriage house of George Washington's, and behind me here is an example of what would be called a riding chair in the 18th century. Uh, a riding chair generally cost around 10 pounds sterling, uh, and a horse to go with it. The base model horse, you're looking at about another 10 pounds sterling. Now we maybe take it for granted now how easy transportation is. Uh, for example, a trip today between Washington DC and New York City would take about 30 minutes by plane. Uh, if you want to drive it and traffic's not that bad along I-95, you're looking at maybe three to four hours. In Washington's time, uh, if you had to walk that distance, you were looking at up to uh, a three week journey because you could only go, in a best case scenario, about 20 miles per day if you're on foot. Now, if you're on horseback, you can maybe push that to 30 or so. Uh, but anything more, the road conditions have to be perfect and everything has to go right for you. The other thing to keep in mind is that uh, when you were traveling in the 18th century, going long distances was not as maybe easy as we could even do it today with saying, hey, there's a really cool play going on at the Met. Let me hop in the car and drive up to New York City. Uh, or get a plane ticket. Uh, in this time period, because it took so long to do this, you had to really plan ahead and you had to bring your supplies with you or know that you had places to stop along the way uh, to pick up those supplies. One of the things you had to always make sure you had with you was uh, enough drinking water. The other thing you need to do is make sure you bring some sort of uh, hardtack or some sort of bread uh, or meat products that are not going to spoil along the way. Now there was only really one series of roads, uh, sort of the, the 18th century equivalent of an interstate system, uh, sort of the I-95 corridor, if you will, of the 18th century, was a road system known as the King's Highway. Uh, it went 1,300 miles from Charleston, South Carolina, all the way up to Boston, Massachusetts. That sort of road probably, if the weather was good uh, year round, you could use and could probably keep up that three mile an hour on foot sustained speed. But once you get off sort of the interstate, if you will, uh, now you're sort of taking luck into your own hands about whether the road's gonna be washed out, uh, whether a tree's gonna have fallen over it. And those are the things that really add up time because you, you can look at this carriage, this is not something you wanna take off-roading. The other thing to keep in mind in this time period is that you don't necessarily have the state troopers lining the highways because you can only call for help as far as you can scream. If, if your wagon breaks down and you break an axle, if your horse starts to get sick, if somebody gets bitten by a snake because you also have to deal with random wild animals along the way. These are all things that if, if something goes wrong, there isn't necessarily anyone to come help. So you, you know, it was regular in this time period to travel with some form of weapon. Uh, it was generally encouraged for people to travel in groups. Now if you want to go out, say, towards Western Virginia or the back country of Pennsylvania, now you have to worry about bears and mountain lions and all sorts of other things that might sneak up on you or spook your horse. So travel in the 18th century was very much like the old cliche of, uh, you know, the journey is half the adventure. Because even if you were going someplace really cool, that time that it took you to get there uh, adds up and who knows what, what mischief you could find along the way.